Here, I'm going to go through three examples of a typical present value um, problem or question in a finance class uh, of college level or something similar to that. Now, in a previous tutorial, I've already told you what the present value function is, how to use it, and um, basically what present value means. So this one, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. So let's uh, go ahead and dive right on in. The first question is a very basic one. With an interest rate of 6%, what is the current value of seven million dollars if you will receive it in 15 years? This is um, sort of a typical example what's worth more so much in the future or so much now. So let's figure out what it's actually worth in today's dollars or using uh, only interest rates. So equals PV open parentheses now our rate that's very easy just our interest rate of six percent so point oh six now remember when you're doing the interest rate here, you have to do it as a decimal. So 0.06, you can't type in a whole number like six. It's not going to interpret that correctly. The number of periods, well, that's very easy. It's 15 years. So our number of periods, 15 comma payment. Are we going to be paying into this at all? Or is anyone going to be paying us at all over these 15 years? No. So payment is zero because we're only talking about one lump sum in 15 years. But we do know the future value. So what is the future value? Seven million dollars. Now if you wanted, you could type it in as seven, seven thousand, or actually seven million. If you're doing this in the real world, you're gonna break it down to a smaller number, such as seven for a mil seven million. So now we have the rate right here, the number of periods, 15, Payment is zero, because we're not going to be paying into it. It's not an annuity. And the future value is seven million. Let's close the parentheses and hit enter. So it tells us that the present value is um, just about three million dollars. Now, why is this red? Why is this negative? Well, because uh, it's assuming that this is your cash outflow. So you're going to put this three million in, say, a bank or a bond that pays six percent and to put your money into something you have to pay it out but to get rid of the red the negative simply put a little minus sign right in front of the PV function once you do that you'll notice that it's a positive number once again alright so let's go ahead and go to the second present value problem on the second tab what is the present value of putting five hundred dollars into an interest bearing account with a 2.75% interest rate for six years. Now this would be considered the basic annuity problem, right? An annuity, a set of equal cash flows that you're investing at uh, an equal rate over a period of time. So the equal cash flows being $500 invested, uh, let's say, once a year for six years. So we're gonna keep it easy by keeping it at years for now. So equals PV, open parentheses, our rate, very easy, 2.75%. Remember, put it in decimal form, 0.0275, comma. Number of periods, very easy. We're sticking with years for now, so six, comma. Now the payment. Well, this time we are going to be paying into the account every year. So the payment here is going to be 500, because that's how much we're paying in. Now we don't have to worry about a future value for this problem because we're not trying to <clears throat> figure out how much one lump sum in the future is worth today. We have many payments into the account. So, close the parentheses. We've got the percentage for our rate, number of periods, six, and the payment, which is $500, going in every period. Simply hit enter. And we see you will end up with, or in today's dollars, it's $2,731.18. Once again, to make that positive, double click, put a negative sign in front of it, and hit enter. And that's it for that problem. So just remember that since this is an annuity, we do have to fill in the argument for the payment. This one right here, PMT. So the payment basically is what you're going to do for an annuity, right? Future value, if you want to figure out what one lump sum is, worth um, to sit in today. So, let's go on to the third example. It's a little bit different, maybe a little bit trickier, but same premise. 
So if you know that you can sell something, say an asset, in three years for $170,000, right? And you know that the discount rate for the asset is 4.25% per all of your due diligence and your, your own research. Well then, what are you going to pay for the asset now? So this is a present value. It's a little bit different, but the point is, how much money are you going to shell out now so that you can sell it for 175 or 170 grand in the future with a 4.25% discount rate? All right. So the way to do this, exactly like before, just a different word problem. So equals PV, open parentheses, once again, our rate, well that's easy, right? Discount rate, that's our rate, 4.25%. So 0 0.0425. Now how many years would we like to discount this for? Well, we want to discount it for three years. So three for the number of periods number of periods, three. Now for the payment, are we going to have any payments in or out? Well, let's say that this is um, a non-cash flow generating asset, right? Could be a um, mainframe for data backup or something like that. So the payment's going to be zero. But we do have a future value. The future value is $170,000. If you had it in thousands, you would simply write 170, but I'm going to put the full number here, 170,000. Close the parentheses, and we're done. So all I did here, the rate, is the discount rate this time. It's not called interest rate, but it's the same thing for um, our purposes, for what we're doing. Number of periods, three years, and there is no payment. It's just a simple lump sum in three years, right? It's worth $170,000 in three years. So that is the future value of it. Now what's it worth today? Let's hit enter and find out. So today it is worth $150,044.72. Now once again, this is a negative number. You can see red has the parentheses around it because you have to pay that much money in order to get this asset or to gain the asset. So it's considered a cash outflow, right? Negative. But to make it a positive number, simply go before the function, negative sign, enter. Now we have a positive number. So that's about it for these three examples. Uh, I think we've pretty much covered a broad range of things. Um, this was probably the most difficult example. But don't forget, just because the word problems, the wording's a little bit different, the inputs are going to be relatively the same. So that's it for these examples.